So I have been driving the 2024 Toyota Tacoma, which is all new for 2024, and I'm really excited. I love the part train, I love the transmission and the ride and the handling, but now it's time to talk about the 2025 Toyota 4Runner in terms of driving dynamics because it's going to share much of the platform and the engine and the powertrain and maybe even the suspension and transmission with the Tacoma. So based on my experience driving a Tacoma, I think I can also predict the driving behavior of the all new 6th gen Toyota 4Runner. We don't know exactly when that one is going to come out yet, perhaps so we're still at least a year away, but it's going to be really interesting and fascinating to predict the driving behavior and driving characteristic of the all new Toyota 4Runner based on my experience with the Tacoma. So let me go through one by one in terms of what I think the new 4Runner will feel like, both in terms of engine, in terms of transmission, braking, and also the handling and the overall feel, because I know you guys are all waiting to hear more about the all new 2025 Toyota 4Runner. Let's go. Welcome back. So just to be clear, I am driving the 2024 Toyota Tacoma and I've done the full review on this. So if you haven't seen that one yet, please watch that video. But what I want to do is try to predict and figure out what the 2025 Toyota 4Runner might feel like on the road based on my experience driving this one here, which is a Tacoma. Why? Well, because the two are going to share the same platform based on my predictions. And in fact, they're going to share probably everything, the engine, the actual eight-speed automatic transmission, maybe even the suspension system, although there has to be some changes because one is SUV and one is a truck. And clearly the 4Runner will have a completely different body from a B-pillar backward, but the rest of the body could be pretty similar to the Tacoma. And so we can probably make some calculated predictions. So first, let's go over the powertrain. The new Tacoma has a 2.4 turbocharged four cylinder engine, which is a big change from the 3.5 liter V6 engine that we had. Uh, but the same kind of change will also be happening with uh, 4Runner, because my suspicion is that the 4 liter V6 engine in the current gen 4Runner will become the 2.4 turbo as well. Uh, also, the Tacoma does have a 2.4 turbo with a hybrid option, which is called iForce Max, and I expect the exact same engine and uh, powertrain to show up in the 4Runner as well. So at least in terms of the engine, in terms of powertrain, in terms of transmission, the two should be more or less the same, perhaps with some difference in tuning, and that means the 2.4 turbo which has plenty of power and torque with 278 horsepower, 317 pound-foot of torque for the base engine, as well as the iForce Max, which has the electric motor standard between the engine and transmission with substantially more power and torque. And that should be part of the Trail Hunter or TRD Pro lineup for the 4Runner as well. So I think in terms of engine, that's pretty clear. Transmission is also very clear in a sense that it should be identical to the Tacoma's eight-speed automatic transmission. And that means a couple of good things. One is that I really like this 2.4 turbo on this new Tacoma because you get maximum torque of 317 pound-foot of torque at only 1700 RPM compared to before where the maximum torque was at 4600 RPM. So when you step on the gas like this, you get immediate torque and immediate pushback, whereas in the previous generation Tacoma or the current generation 4Runner, even if you step on the gas, it just takes a bit of a time, one or two seconds before it begins to pick up. So the actual acceleration and the pickup time, as well as the feel on the road should improve with the turbocharged engine. And also with this Tacoma, they were able to mimic kind of the truck feel. You know, it doesn't quite feel like a passenger car. They tuned it so that it has a bit of that grunt feel. And I think they will do the same thing with the 4Runner. So you don't need to worry about losing that traditional truck feel that we have right now with both the Tacoma and the 4Runner. So engine's good, the transmission is excellent. The transmission in both the current 4Runner and the previous gen Tacoma was really outdated and also they weren't the best. They don't shift very well, they're not very smooth and oftentimes they were hunting gears up and down. But this 8-speed automatic is absolutely fantastic, world-class, really smooth. It doesn't hunt around or search for the wrong gear and sometimes I can't even tell it's shifting because it's so smooth. So transmission will also be world-class based on my experience driving this Tacoma. Now the suspension is going to be a little bit more complicated to figure out because we don't exactly know which models of the Tacoma will also be offered in the 4Runner. So for example, we have the TRD Pro, which we will have, I'm sure, in the 4Runner, but Tacoma also has a new Trail Hunter, and would that carry over to the 4Runner or not? Hard to say, 
my suspicion is that they will indeed bring the Chira Hunter to the Forerunner as well, and then maybe down the road to a Tundra. So that means we can have a couple of interesting suspension setup that's already available in a Tacoma that should also carry over to the Forerunner, including the full Fox suspension setup front and back, as well as a more upgraded suspension system in the Trail Hunter model. All that should be available in the Forerunner as well. The rear suspension has to be a little bit different though. I know that um, for the Tacoma, they upgraded to the coil spring in the back and that made a huge difference in terms of the feel. But with the Forerunner being a full SUV versus the truck, it's going to have a slightly different suspension, especially because there's a lot more load in the back because the back is larger with an actual SUV cabbing in the rear. So those are some of the things that might be changed. I think we will still be able to have the front stabilizer disconnect that we have in the Tacoma TRD Pro. I think that will also be available in the 4Runner, which will be great because that will allow for full articulation in some heavy duty off-roading uh, courses and plus whatever upgrade they made on the Tacoma for off-roading equipment such as improved crawl control and all that stuff will carry over to the 4Runner as well. So those are all the good stuff. I've noticed that the new Tacoma is quieter and much more stable compared to the old one and we can suspect the same thing will happen with the 4Runner. I think it will be quieter because the power train is more refined and smoother, suspension is better, the body is more rigid and higher rigidity means usually less flex of the body and therefore the car will feel more stable and usually quieter as well. The braking system was really improved on the Tacoma because we now have four disc brakes all around instead of just two in the front. But obviously for Forerunner, we always had four disc brakes. So that is not gonna change. So I suspect the same thing will happen for the Forerunner redesign as well. So the braking should improve, although there was nothing wrong with the braking system on the Forerunner itself. So, so far I talked about the engine, the transmission, the braking, the suspension. But what about the overall feel in terms of steering? Well, we know for sure the new Forerunner will likely adopt the same steering mechanism as the Tacoma, which is the electric power steering instead of a hydraulic power steering. And at first I was really worried about that because in the new Tundra, when they went from hydraulic to electric, they lost some of the tactile feel and it was much lighter than what I liked. But actually in the case of Tacoma, I didn't have to worry. Even though we now have electric power steering, the steering has a pretty good heft, it has good feedback, it feels good on my hands, and it's not as light as I thought, and also it's very precise and accurate. So I would actually say the steering has improved in terms of overfill, but even though it's a little bit lighter than it used to be. So I think in the Forerunner as well, the same kind of stuff will happen. The steering will get a little bit lighter because we're going from hydraulic to electric, but in terms of steering accuracy, how precise it is, how agile it is, and how quickly the car adopts to the steering input, all those things will also happen with the new 4Runner, and therefore I expect uh, the next gen 4Runner to handle better, to be more agile, to be more precise and accurate, and will feel a little bit sportier than it is now, because right now, it really does feel like a truck, and it's almost impossible to handle the 4Runner around twisty corners. It's a little bit scary, in fact, if you're driving on a highway and there's a big curve because the thing leans so much. And that kind of stuff should dramatically improve with adaptation of a new suspension system with a better structural rigidity and then just the overall improvements for weight and so forth since some of the body panels will become aluminum as well. In the case of Tacoma, only the hood and the rear fender or rear quarter panel areas have become aluminum. Uh, but I suspect that maybe in the Forerunner, the front fenders and maybe even the doors could become aluminum, saving weight even more. And the lighter weight combined with a more stiff structure and better suspension will always result in better ride. Which brings me to the last point, which is just the overall feel of a new Forerunner. What would it be like? Well, right now the current gen Forerunner feels solid, feels like a truck. In fact, it feels like a tank. And he has a very traditional body on the frame feel that many people love. At the same time, we all know that uh, current gen model just cannot perform in terms of acceleration because it's really slow, cannot handle curvy road because it leans so much. So in terms of improving those things, I have no doubt the all new 6th gen 4Runner will be substantially better because it's going to ride smoother, it's going to handle corners better, and the engine will be peppier and it's going to accelerate faster. And therefore, it should be way more fun to drive despite losing maybe some of the truck feel. And once again, we'll never know until the new 4Runner comes out and we do a direct comparison between that and this Tacoma right here. 
but for the most part because they are sharing many of the components I think some of the comments I'm making would be reasonably accurate. So for example when you drive the new Toyota Sequoia and drive the new Toyota Tundra the two models do feel pretty similar although once again the Sequoia feels a little bit more solid and a little bit more planted just because there's a lot more weight in the back it's holding the rear end down to the floor but if you actually take the Tundra and load it up in the rear it also stabilizes in terms of the balance front and back and therefore it feels even more like a Sequoia. So if my driving experience with this new Tacoma is any indication, please don't worry. In fact, be excited. Be super excited because the new generation 4Runner should have all the traits that you love about the 4Runner and yet improve all the things that you didn't like about the 4Runner. It's going to be the best generation 4Runner that will perform the best because of a great powertrain, great suspension system, and just great engineering all around. So that is my conclusion in terms of how the vehicle might feel, in terms of what the uh, actual 4Runner might look like, both exterior and interior. I already created a video on that one. So if you haven't seen that one, please go and watch my predictions for 2025 4Runner, where I talk about a lot of details, including the design for the outside and also design for inside, as well as features and components. I hope you enjoyed my video. This is just a short video to talk about the next gen 4Runner. It's not too long away. I'm sure in the next several months we will see some teaser photos or images about the 4Runner. And hopefully within a year or so we'll get to drive one and we can finally talk about the next gen 4Runner, which I have been talking about for so many years. If you enjoyed my video, I would appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up, make some comments. And if you haven't done so yet, would you also kindly subscribe to my channel and that would be truly appreciated. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.